Have you ever wondered if one person's actions can really make a difference? Well, in chapter 9 of the book of Ezra, we read that Ezra was so overwhelmed by the compromise and by the sin of his people that his repentance starts to have an impact on the people as we read in chapter 10. You see, the people are convicted after hearing Ezra's prayer, and they cry out to God in repentance, but repentance is so much more than heartfelt words, powerful emotions. It's even more than just responding in prayer. You see, their repentance translates into a resolve to separate themselves from the pagans in their land and for the men who had intermarried to divorce from their pagan wives. And the chapter ends with a record of the leaders who had engaged in this practice and how they dealt with all the intermarriages. Now, this chapter is full of lessons about obedience, repentance, restoration. Like the Israelites, we may find ourselves confronted with our own disobedience or areas of compromise in our lives. And in those moments, it's crucial that we confess our sins, take responsibility for our actions. This may look like leaving behind a certain relationship, habits, activities that hinder our spiritual growth and compromise our commitment to God. You know, in a very real way, I think Ezra's example and the Israelites' response should be inspirational for us to respond in obedience to God's Word and to address areas of compromise in our lives. It's like the author of Hebrews in the New Testament writes to the early church. Let me encourage you with this. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. And now, now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne.